If there's one thing this channel is about, or that I want it to be about, it's honesty. It's honesty that I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, it's honesty that I'm not very good at certain things, um, and so today's video I thought I would be honest about a particular issue that we are dealing with in my house at the moment, and that is defiance. Flat out, rude, don't give a monkeys, defiance. It is wearing. I am worn. I am worn out. I am worn down. But it's not the first time that we've faced defiance in this house. We've had phases of it before and so I do know that it's just a phase and I know that he will come out the other side and he it will be nice again. He isn't forever going to be this massive knobhead that he's being at the moment. So I kind of have to cast my mind back to when we've gone through this before and the things that maybe have helped me get through it before. So that's what I was going to talk about today. It's a little bit of venting. I normally try and be a bit creative with my videos, but this isn't going to be that. It's not going to be funny. It's not going to be intercut with little sort of skitty things. No, this is just me venting at you. So the first thing that I find helpful when we are dealing with one of these confrontations and blowouts is to treat it like a road rage incident. Bear with me. If you're driving along and someone cuts you up and you're really annoyed with them and they're clearly in the wrong but they kind of don't care and they're a little bit aggressive, if you get aggressive back then they get even more aggressive and then before you know it you're out of your cars smashing each other's windscreens in or something like that. I know in my logical, rational mind that if I engage and if I get angry and if I get confrontational, it doesn't help. It makes it worse. And it's so frustrating that you would think if I'm shouting, I don't shout all that much, but when I am shouting, you would think he would go, oh God, mum's really annoyed. Oh, I better stop doing this thing and I'd better be nice. He doesn't care. <laughs> I don't get it. Because I'm sure when I was growing up, that's how it worked. I'd be a bit of an idiot, mum and dad would shout at me, I'd go, oops, sorry, and then we'd all just kind of move on with life. But no, apparently my kids, they don't care. So whatever it is that they are demanding, I'm just going to stand firm. I'm going to say no, I'm going to explain it calmly, and I'm just going to keep repeating that, and I'm not going to engage, and I'm going to stay calm, and they are going to shout, and they are going to scream, and they're going to lash out, and whatever they do, I just have to stay calm. And eventually, they do just kind of burn themselves out and we've all survived. And they've probably come out of it quicker than they would have if I'd joined in with the shouting. So just try and remain calm, give that idiot driver a stern toot, a stern look, and then just drive on by. The second thing that I have to try and remember, because I do find this helpful, is to try and think where this is coming from. I know my children are nice children. They're nice people, they're nice natured. So where has this rage and confrontational defiant behaviour come from? They haven't had a personality transplant. Please, 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 please. I think I often forget with both of my boys that they are still so young. It's like, oh, you can talk and you can walk and you can do things for yourself. You're done. But then all of a sudden their trousers are an inch too short and you're like, you've been secretly growing. And just the physical process of growing must be exhausting. You know, I think back to when I was pregnant and growing a human and the energy that was sapped from my body to do that. And then the aches from things stretching and repositioning. It's a lot physically, it's a lot to deal with. And they are going through that in sometimes these really rapid spurts, it must be such a physical thing. And then what causes the growing? It's the hormones. You, testosterone, are the reason for so many of the problems in the world, and you're probably the reason for the current problems I'm having now. So thanks for that. And again, I can reference it back to things like my time in the month. I've been having periods for over 20 years, and I still don't deal with them all that well. Quite often, I will have a day where I am just evil. Everyone annoys me, everything annoys me, I'm just under a black cloud. And if I don't deal with it well after 20 odd years, how can I expect my still very small children to handle these massive spurts of hormones? It's a big ask. So if I try and think of it from that point of view, their nature hasn't changed, 
they generally as a person haven't changed. It's physical, it's chemical and hormonal and temporary. So I've kind of covered how I deal with it, why maybe it's happening. So the other thing is, is there anything I can do about it? And the short answer, to a large extent, probably not. They probably just got to get through it and come out the other side. But there are a couple of things I've done previously that have actually helped. One of them is to try and help their kind of emotional maturity along. So there are two books that I've tried to use before to help with this kind of conversation. One is My Many Coloured Days by Dr. Zeus, which has different colours for different moods. Didn't really need to explain that, did I? But the particular one that comes into play for this, Black Days. Then come my black days, mad and loud. I howl and growl at every cloud. And it's trying to explain those feelings, that we all have those feelings and it's normal and it's okay and they will go away again. And then this one, I've got to be honest, the boys haven't taken to quite as much, but I like the thing behind it, so I keep on trying. And it's called Words and Your Heart. So the words that go into your ears can actually affect your heart and some words can really hurt. And it's just trying to have a conversation that works both ways, because I'm saying, the things you say hurt me, and when you're mean to your brother, and when you're mean to your dad, but it equally, I hurt them. Because I can snap and be horrible, and I'm just so annoyed, and I'm so frustrated, and I, in all honesty, at times, I don't like them. I always love them, but there are times where I don't like them. And that sounds so awful to say that there are times where I don't like my children. Please comment below if you know what I'm talking about and don't, so that I don't feel like just the worst mother in the world. But if experience has taught me anything, it's that this will pass. It is just a phase. My lovely little boy will come back. He's still in there. He's just dealing with some stuff at the moment and the overspill, just, pff, God. And the other thing is reward charts. Now, I know reward charts don't work for every child, but for my children, they do tend to be really effective. And I think it is a control thing because so many of our battles are control struggles and power struggles. So somehow or other, when you do the chart, you're not just saying, you will do as you're told. You're kind of saying, well, if you choose to do this, you'll get a mark on your chart and you'll work towards a whatever the reward's gonna be. Whereas if you do this, you won't. And it puts the power back in their hands that they're, well, I'm not doing it because I'm told to, I'm doing it because I, I choose to do it. I don't know, maybe none of that makes any sense. For whatever reason, I have generally found if I implement a reward chart, it does work and it encourages the good behavior. And then it's like you've kind of broken that barrier and they're now going, oh yeah, I'll do this and I'll, I'll behave well. And they carry on doing it even once the chart is finished. So yeah, if you can relate, <laughs> let me know. If you have tips, if you have your own stories of how you've dealt with this, comment below. I think the more we can talk about this kind of stuff, the less alone we feel and the easier it is to deal with. Having just got this off my chest <laughs> to you now, I feel a lot better. So if you've stuck with me this far, thank you very much. This has been very good and very helpful for me. Don't know how it's been for you, but if you've liked this video, please press like, please subscribe to see more. I promise I normally make videos that are more creative than this, but um, sometimes mum life, eh? So I'll see you soon. Bye.